Tuesday's edition of All Angles at ENCA. We are live from the OR Tambo International Airport. Uh, myself and our sports editor, uh, Brabha Tambo Beni, are giving you uh, what's happening uh, in terms of South Africans celebrating world champions for the fourth time. Uh, Bravi, you saw them at least. I was walking into uh, the airport when they arrived, so I only saw it on the screen. Siago Lisi, that warm welcome. Uh, how was the crowd at that moment? You know, Masejo, I was here four years ago, yeah. and I thought that was probably the loudest cheer I've ever heard for the Springboks outside of a stadium. Yeah. But today was something special. And I think what made it special is that four years ago, it was purely rugby fans that were here. This time around, it was South Africa. Yeah. It was people from all, all walks of life, all races, all genders, all creeds. The young, the old, some newborns, Lots of foreigners who are obviously coming into the country from, from around the world. Yeah. And the love for the Springboks is, is something special. Yeah. I think when Nelson Mandela, all those years ago, in 1994, met up with Francois Pinar and wanted to use his team to unite South Africa, I don't think in his wildest dreams he would have thought of this happening. Mm. I don't think in his wildest dreams he would have thought that a young man from his region, Ukwash, you know? would wear that number six jersey that he had worn in 1995 at Ellis Park yeah. in Tokyo and then in Paris and led the Springboks to becoming only the second team to winning back-to-back -back World Cup titles and becoming the first team mm. ever in the history of rugby mm. to win four world titles. Yeah. And and the atmosphere was so palpable. Yeah. I can it was goosebumps. Right mm. You know, when the plane landed and everyone <laughs> caught wind that the plane is touched on. Emirates flight EK761. Yeah. When it did the dry turn after turning over Delmas and came from the south on its final approach the, the, the mood was so tense. Mm. And then when the crowd heard it touched on this place it was absolute pandemonium. Yeah. And that speaks vol volumes to what Sia Kolisi and his men have done. And for me, Bravi, it's also about the fact that when you look at it, this is not a victory only for us as South Africans. It's a victory for the entire continent. We are the only African uh, team to have won this four times. No, without a doubt. I think, you know, Masiko, it's the one thing that I think has bothered rugby Africa yeah. for a very long time. The fact that, yes, you'll always have the Springboks there. Mm. They're one of the world's superpowers. But you'll have a Namibia. And there are not enough spots for African teams yes. at a World Cup. And I'm glad the likes of Sia Kolisi and Rassi Erasmus and uh, Jacques Minaba last week in the build-up the final were saying it, that yes, we feel the weight of expectation um, and the excitement and support of 62 million South Africans. But this is not just for South Africa. This is for Africa. Yeah. Because the messages that they've received from across the African continent you know, in Nigeria, in, in Zambia, in Kenya, even in Morocco, people are seeing themselves now as African. Yeah. People are saying the Springboks represent us. Mm. You know, and, 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 and that's important. That's yeah. extremely important. And I hope Masako us going now to twenty twenty seven World Cup in Australia. World well, Japan are gonna add more teams and I hope yes. we'll have more African teams. We'll have at least two more spots coming from Africa. Hopefully. And and that will increase I think interest within the game across the continent and more than anything it will I think it will, it will increase the development the money that goes in mm. and give countries like Nigeria yeah. who we've seen the players, players from the DRC are playing here Zimbabwe an opportunity playing, yeah, yeah. to really step up I mean I saw a stat this week at some point I think 1974 um, Rhodesia then mm. beat the All Blacks yeah. in 1810 you know so so the, the talent is there. You look at Springbok teams of past. You look at some Aussie teams. There are plenty of, of former Zimbabweans in, in those teams. Yeah. And then you look at players from the Jersey, at France. The number of, of players from exactly, the African from continent Africa playing there. That, that have played for France in the mm. past. The likes of Abdel Tif Benazi, Serge Benson, you know, uh, their captain from 2011, Terry Dusotwa. Mm. So it, it, there's no lack of talent on the African continent yeah. for rugby. Mm. And, and the Springboks, again, have shown not, uh, not only flown the flag for South Africa, they've flown it for the African Union and for every single child in every single village yeah. on this continent that dreams of making it big on the global, yeah. on the global stage. And of course we do have uh, um, 
PNCA Sports anchor Nzako Mkari. He was at that press conference, Bravi, that just wrapped up with Captain Siago Lisi, you know, uh, and how he came out. I'll never forget how he came out of those tunnels, as well as outgoing coach Jacques Ninaba and the type of, um, you know, heartfelt message that he had from him. It's always nice to get flowers while you're still breathing, right? And they've been giving themselves and each other these flowers. So we will connect to Nzako Mkari at some point, but I want to talk about the tour. You know, we know that uh, Saru President uh, Mark uh, has been saying that uh, uh, he's already, he was already grateful. I think they released a press uh, re a release uh, from Saru on the 23rd of um, October. Then we hadn't even won. We had just come back from almost dying, <laughs> uh, beating England 12-11. Uh, and he was saying, look, we will try and reach every corner. And back then it was obviously difficult in 2019. We had just been trying to get used to the idea of COVID-19. Masako, let me just go back to your previous point about giving flowers to people while they're still alive. A lot has been said about Rasi Rasmus, and we must give credit to him. You know, he came in as director of rugby and as coach in 2018, brought Jacques with him, and he made the All decision. Right. I think uh, yeah. the team is telling me that actually uh, the sports minister, uh, Zizi Gota, is continuing with the press. I'm sure he also uh, wants to congratulate them and South Africa. Let's take you back there quickly, very, um, very quickly live. We'll be back. Just the, the rugby world champions uh, actually win along with the Web Ellis Trophy. Uh, do you mind maybe taking us into confidence in terms of what the prize money is for, for winning the Rugby World Cup and, and what how will that uh, be disseminated amongst the, the players? Uh, World Rugby doesn't give you prize money. There's no prize money pay for the trophy, but we have win bonuses that we, we plan for four years in advance. You answered. And uh, so they are taken care of by that. So... Our players that receive prize money, and, uh, and uh, yes, we, we plan for it four years in advance. And that we do from, from World Cup to World Cup. Sir, Mr. Minister, what, what does it sound like this is the debut matter for you, though? Because a very senior person in SRB once told me that when it comes to any other national team, you guys are very keen on speaking openly about rewarding them. Can you please, I think many of our colleagues want you to answer that question. Mr. President, can I just ask you? Um, succession plan, Mr. Prison. Is it too early to ask about that? We know Jacques Ninaba is moving on. We know Rassi Rasmus's contract is only until 2025. We know Sia Kalisi is going to France now. Can you possibly just give us an idea of what the thinking will be going ahead? So thank you. I, I, I think we, 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 we'll do the wash up of the tour and we'll talk about uh, what, where we're going to go next. But there's no rush. We, we have a the director of rugby could fill in that role in the meantime. And we're taking our time to see how uh, the, the other coaches within the system have feared thus far. And then we'll make a decision. So we, there's no big rush for us to, to go ahead and appoint a coach tomorrow. We have cover, enough cover, so that the, the programs can continue. Yes, we are looking from within as well, because we are building succession. We are building capacity within the organization, so we will look deep in the organization. If, if we fail to find the right person, we look outside. No, but but it's 25. This, this two years from now. It's two years from now, so there's no rush for us to go out there. We're going to do the wash-up. We're going to see what our, our, our succession plan looks like and where we are in that planning. And based on that, we'll either decide to get a coach next year, the following year, or maybe the, or maybe the director of rugby will coach the team until the next World Cup. But there's no rush right now, so we, we, then we, we're not rushing to do anything. And we've got a, a system within, a fast-track system of coaches that, we, that we've implemented, so we're going to look within. Thank you very much, guys. That concludes uh, the section of the news card, Mr. No, uh, Minister. No, I, I think we, we, we may be comparing uh, apples and bananas. If you ask what we said about other national teams compared to rugby, you can see how structured and organized Saru is. I mean, the issue of bonuses were resolved not on the eve, on the doorstep of the tournament, way before that. And it can, you, can only, uh, you can only wish that other federations get inspiration. And I think it's that kind of leadership that is required by other federations, where you don't have to deal with issues at the door of tournament because it may affect the performance of players. Uh, the president last night, as part of recognition, did um, already declare the 15th of December as a public holiday. It's a recognition. 
uh, you may not look at it from a monetary point of view. We do think that uh, they deserve. As a country, we need a lot of counseling. Uh, I think we'll use the 15 and the days before that. The three games where you're really uh, tight, quite tough for me, especially those of you who watch on TV, I watched them live. Uh, it was a bit where if I did not collapse, I will never collapse again. <laughs> but you know, uh, whether you win by a point or a point, it's a win. It's a point. <laughs> so, so South Africa is a, South Africa has a point. So I don't think um, compared to what we did with before, we must compare with this. Um, I went to <clears throat> when they when we played in the champs with uh, Wallabies at Loftus. Um, I visited what is a, a, a place called Poland. I spoke to the president about it to see some of these young players who come, who play for uh, Springboks who come from Poland to see the kind of school system they have, well organized. I was inspired. Then I realized why we have some of the best young rugby players in the, in the spring box. And these are some of the lessons as we build a school sport we must learn from. Uh, very solid, very organized, and I think these are the lessons going forward we, must, uh, we will carry. I hope other federations, and I think Saru, will be able to share their experience, their efficiency, in dealing with these issues with other federations. Z, we also arrived, we need some rest. <laughs> <laughs> One more there. Last question. He was here since in the morning. Uh, Minister, this, this one's for you again. Um, as much as you speak of the, the structures at the schools and everything, and obviously, we, we all believe that it, it's, it's needed throughout for every sporting code. The bulk of the players in the Springboks, let's say a, a Springboks starting 15 or, or a Proteas starting uh, 11, almost all of them have gone to Ivy League schools. Almost all of them have... Uh, you know, the top tier uh, schools, Hilton, uh, Saints, uh, Cares, those schools. The children in, in Botsabelo, in Tabanchu, in Kronstadt still don't have that privilege. And, and that, what, 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 does, what does it, how do we resolve that? You miss the school sport in Daba. Uh, in the declaration and in my speech, which I'll send it to you. I think there was somebody from newsroom. We talk about school sport, but also we need an integrate as part of integrated school sport in the country to deal with the, the history of former model C schools that have got better facilities as opposed to public schools, which are 23,000 with less facilities. We address that. So as part of this transition, we go into detail about it. Kelly Moore. Thank you very Let's much. Let's go and celebrate outside. Yes, I like that, Mr. Minister. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Minister. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, everybody, for being here today, and enjoy the celebrations.